I removed as many parts from the sprues as I thought was a good start to painting this model and prepared them for painting by sanding. Starting with the hull, I am spraying TCP 1000 Norfolk 65A anti fouling red on the bottom and up to about halfway on the side of the hull. I am spraying this color from a 2 ounce stock bottle fitted with a badger adapter at 28 to 30 psi with a Vega 2000 airbrush having a medium or 0.5 millimeter tip. As you can observe, there is no thinning required to get a uniform coating of true color paint. You will note that during this entire build of the USS Buckley, we use our paint straight from production retains or stock without adding any additional materials. After masking the hull using our TCP 900 masking paper on the bottom and lower vertical portion where the anti-fouling red is applied, I am spraying TCP 1003 Haze Gray 5H at 28 to 30 PSI from a 1 ounce stock bottle fitted with a Badger adapter. In fact, Throughout this entire chapter on painting, I use the same technique I have done in the past with many other model builds, so I will not repeat this information. Note that I am painting both the outside and inside of the hull, as a very small portion of the inside may be visible after putting in the deck. TCP 1003 Haze Gray 5H is now being applied to a bunch of parts for the USS Buckley. Note for Measure 22 for US World War II naval ships that Haze Gray 5H was painted on all vertical surfaces while TCP 1010 Deck Blue 20B will be painted on all horizontal surfaces. There were exceptions to this rule and would be approved by Bureau of Ships as needed. Near the bow, there is a small white area painted from the lowest part of the hull to the front of the bow. We are using TCP 431 matte white for this part since all of the colors used are matte finish. Note we have masked near the entire outside of the hull in order to achieve this along with protecting the inside to prevent overspray.
removing all of the masking paper from the hull is the next part of this video. Note we are pulling the masking paper off the hull as close to 180 degrees as possible. When required, you can start an area with a tweezer, but be very careful you do not scratch the paint. As you can see, removing our masking paper does not remove any paint we applied. It should be noted that every color in our military paint product line has an adhesion promoter added to prevent peeling when painting multiple colors. Deck Blue 20B 1942 to 1945 is being painted on the main deck. Since the deck has some nooks and crannies, turn and tilt the cardboard support as much as needed to ensure complete coverage. Then the same color is being painted on a number of parts. Some of these parts, notably the gun mounts, have vertical walls which will have to be hand painted haze gray later on before they are cemented in place. The torpedo tubes were painted on one side in the previous video and the second side is being done here. TCP 433 matte black is being painted on all guns that are on board the Buckley. These are the 40 millimeter twin guns, lots of 20 millimeter guns and about a half dozen three inch guns. All of these need to be painted on both sides so there are two small sections to this video. The barrels will be hand painted matte steel before the guns are mounted into the gun tubs. Matte Steel TCP-412 is being sprayed on both sides of the anchors and the shafts in this part of the video. Since the matte metallic color dries within 30 to 45 minutes, we are able to paint both sides in a relatively short period of time. 
The majority of our matte colors will easily dry within 60 minutes of application. Semi-matte aluminum TCP356 is traditionally a railroad color but it will work very nicely for the depth charges and the racks that are present on the stern of the Buckley. Since we spray this color very inoften, we are using a paint cup to hold this color. Last color we are painting in this chapter is the TCP 1014 polished bronze on the propellers. Note we mounted the props on a pair of tweezers to fully paint them both at the same time. If you have any questions about techniques explored in this video or general questions about this build, please post your questions in the comments section below.